A record defense spending bill getting bipartisan Senate approval. The annual measure now headed to President Biden's desk. In Japan, the biggest military buildup since World War II in the face of a possible war in the region. 36 Chinese companies added to the U.S. trading blacklist, with top Chinese microchip maker YMTC among them. A Chinese student under arrest in the U.S., accused of stalking and threatening an activist who showed support for democracy in China. And a warning about new COVID-19 virus variants. U.S. consulates in China suspending services amid an ongoing outbreak. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. The Senate greenlighting a record $858 billion in annual defense spending. The National Defense Authorization Act, or NDAA, is an annual must-pass bill setting policy for the Pentagon. The upper chamber approved it by an overwhelming 83 to 11 bipartisan majority. The bill features $45 billion more than proposed by President Joe Biden. But on top of the military spending budget, the measure features a 4.6 percent pay increase for the troops, funding for purchases of weapons, ships and aircraft, and support for Taiwan and Ukraine. The island faces aggression from China, while Ukraine continues to fight an invasion by Russia. It also rescinds the military's COVID-19 vaccine mandate. Other provisions include allowing U.S. Supreme Court justices and federal judges to shield their personal information from being viewed online and authorizing more funds to develop hypersonic weapons and purchase weapon systems. The House passed the NDAA last week. It heads to the White House next, where Biden is expected to quickly sign it into law. Outside the U.S., some of Washington's allies in Asia are also boosting their military spending. Japan is proposing its biggest military buildup since World War II. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida on Friday announced a $320 billion plan. He says it will prepare the nation for sustained conflict and buy missiles capable of striking China. China's current external stance and military trends are a challenge to our country's peace and security, the securing of global peace and stability, and the enhancement of international order based on the rule of law. Japanese authorities fear that Russia's invasion of Ukraine will encourage China to attack Taiwan. This could threaten nearby Japanese islands, disrupt supplies of semiconductors from Taiwan, and put a potential block on sea lanes that supply Middle East oil. Nearby, Taiwan has proposed a 13.9 percent hike in defense spending in 2023, totaling a record high of $18.3 billion. South Korea has proposed $42 billion for its 2023 defense budget, up 4.6 percent from 2022. This is amid rising tensions with North Korea. The Biden administration is blacklisting 36 more Chinese companies, including the country's top microchip maker, YMTC. The move comes amid concerns over national security and an effort to slow down China's growing chip industry. The 36 Chinese groups have been placed on what's called the entity list, which will severely restrict business dealings with American companies. The most notable company, chipmaker YMTC, was added over fears that it's still supplying previously blacklisted Chinese tech giants like telecom equipment maker Huawei and video surveillance company Hikvision. Of the 36 companies placed on the list, 21 will be further hit with the foreign direct product rule. This means they will have their access blocked to any technology made with U.S. equipment. TikTok now in the sights of U.S. lawmakers and governors. The Senate unanimously passed a bill earlier this week banning the short video platform from devices used by federal agencies. The chamber cited national security. What's more, at least 10 states have banned TikTok on governmental devices. They are Alabama, Georgia, Idaho, Utah, Texas, Maryland, South Dakota, North Dakota, South Carolina, and Nebraska. But experts say there's another layer of concern, risks to children. FCC Commissioner Brandon Carr sat down with CNN to talk about it. 
NTD's Daniel Monahan has the story. Millions of Americans are on TikTok, including over two-thirds of teens. They believe that it's a fun platform and that there is nothing sinister about it. However, Carr says that's just the sheep's clothing. Underneath of it, it operates as a sophisticated surveillance tool. It's pulling everything from search and browsing history, keystroke patterns, potentially biometrics, including face prints and voice prints. And for years, we were told, don't worry, none of this is stored in China. But there was some internal communication from TikTok leaked over the summer that showed, quote, everything is seen back in China. Carr says that the national security concerns are real. He says the Senate bill banning TikTok on government devices was an important step, but that more needs to be done. He says parents should be concerned. A report just came out yesterday that New York Times covered that said within 30 minutes of a 13-year-old going on TikTok, they are fed content about eating disorders, about uh, self-harm, suicide. The journalist asked whether the TikTok content encourages self-harm and eating disorders. And Carr said that's what the information is showing. Carr then explained how the parent company of TikTok, ByteDance, does not show that kind of content to kids in China. And there they demonstrate educational material, museum exhibits, science experiments. That's the content that kids there are being shown. Kids here are being shown things like the blackout challenge, which encourages kids to strangulate themselves. In fact, we had 15 kids die from doing the blackout challenge under 12 years old in this country. Carr then discussed a letter he sent to the Justice Department asking its antitrust regulators to look at Google's and Apple's handling of TikTok. He also suggested that tech companies should remove TikTok from their app store. Daniel Monahan, NTD News. Good news for around 200 Chinese firms listed in the U.S. They probably won't be kicked off U.S. stock exchanges in the near future. For the first time ever, U.S. regulators have gained full access to audits of Chinese companies. The U.S. market watchdog, the SEC, made the announcement Thursday. Here's some background. The SEC has battled for years to gain access to Chinese audits because of accusations of accounting fraud by Chinese companies. It even threatened to kick Chinese firms off the U.S. stock market. Offering audit access to the SEC is one of the must-dos for all companies looking to list in the U.S. stock market. But for more than 10 years, the Chinese regime refused to allow it for Chinese companies, citing national security concerns. The SEC allowed them to list in the U.S. anyway. To address the issue, Congress passed the Holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act in 2020. Under it, foreign companies that don't comply with the SEC's audit request would be kicked off the U.S. market. China agreed to allow complete access back in August to avoid its domestic companies from getting the boot. The SEC chose two firms for audit in Hong Kong and China. The SEC warns that if Beijing stops cooperating, the threat of delisting will be back on the table. A Chinese student from Berklee College of Music in Boston arrested Wednesday on stalking charges. Prosecutors say he threatened an activist for posting flyers supporting democracy in China. Let's zoom in. The 25-year-old student Xiao Lei Wu allegedly told the person he would chop their hands off if they posted more flyers. The activist who posted the flyers is a U.S. lawful permanent resident from China who has family there. The flyer said, stand with Chinese people, we want freedom and we want democracy. The criminal complaint says Wu demanded the flyers be torn down in a Berkeley-focused WeChat group whose 300-plus members included the activist. He wrote that he was reporting them to the public security agency in China and warned their family would soon be, in his words, greeted by them. An explosion of COVID-19 cases is reportedly brewing in China. But what could this mean for the United States? Health officials warn new variants may be emerging. On Thursday, the White House's COVID-19 response coordinator everyone. said Washington is already monitoring the situation and that there is a very robust surveillance program ready to identify infected individuals. That plan also includes testing wastewater in the U.S. COVID-19 is currently spreading faster than ever in China. Looking back on China's early days of pandemic in 2020, each infected person spread the virus to around two or three people. Now, one person can spread it to a whopping 16 in China on average. China's public health officials say 800 million people could be infected this winter. 
Experts warn there's a good chance that new variants will develop when a virus rages out of control, especially in a population as large as China's. Wary of the situation, U.S. consulates in China cut services amid the virus spike. Visa appointments are off limits, as all consulates in the country suspend most non-emergency services. Tensions are mounting in Northeast Asia, with North Korea testing missiles capable of reaching the U.S. and China and Russia developing weapons to attack American satellites. The U.S. Space Force is taking action. Here are the details. Responding to threats from Asia, the U.S. Space Force is announcing a new branch in South Korea. The overseas base is set to keep an eye on China, Russia and North Korea. A U.S. official said the new base would enhance the military's ability to defend the homeland. Specifically, the new Space Force unit would monitor and track incoming missiles. It would also aim to address other threats in the region, such as China and Russia's ability to shoot down satellites. North Korea has launched a record number of missiles this year, including models capable of reaching the continental United States. The Trump administration set up the U.S. Space Force in 2019. One of its goals is to protect the hundreds of American satellites in space, used for communication and surveillance. The Pentagon has said both China and Russia are developing weapons to attack U.S. satellites. The head of the Space Force's Korea branch said he hopes the new move would send a message to potential adversaries like Beijing or Pyongyang that, quote, they see we're ready. On another front, Admiral John Aquilino, commander of the U.S. Pacific Command, warned Beijing earlier this month it would pay a heavy price if it was to invade Taiwan. He compared it with Russia's economic losses amid Western sanctions, adding the Chinese Communist Party would suffer 500 times more. He said, quote, if you look at the globalized economy and how plugged in China is, we could have 500 times more devastating effects. Beijing has dropped six officials from their posts in Britain following violence in the Manchester consulate in October. UK Foreign Minister James Cleverly said this includes the council general. Here's a closer look at the move. In mid-October, dozens of Hong Kongers demonstrated outside the Chinese consulate in Manchester. Their banners and signs decried the ruling Chinese Communist Party and its leader, Xi Jinping. Footage shows one protester appearing to be pulled into the Chinese consulate grounds and beaten. The man later recounted his injuries at a press conference. The incident sent shockwaves through British politics and society, with members of parliament demanding that the government expel the Chinese diplomats involved. The consul general, however, publicly admitted his violent tactics against the Hong Kongers, insisting that it was his duty as a diplomat. It's my duty. We informed the uh, Chinese uh, embassy uh, of that, and we set a deadline which expired today, making it clear that we expected them to take action. In response to our request, uh, the Chinese uh, government have now removed from the UK uh, those uh, officials, including the Consul General uh, himself. Cleverly added that Manchester police had demanded the six officials waive their diplomatic immunity so they could face interrogation. But before that could happen, Beijing dismissed the officials. Cleverly welcomed the move, saying, quote, This demonstrates that our adherence to the rule of law, the seriousness with which we take these incidents, has had an effect. German automakers and Asian battery suppliers are getting together in Hungary. The nation's prime minister is offering up generous benefits to foreign companies. It's an effort to boost Hungary's electric vehicle or EV ambitions and stick its claim as a global center for EVs. Investment in the Hungarian auto industry is dominated by three countries, Germany, known for its car makers, plus China and South Korea, EV battery leaders. According to Reuters, companies from those countries make up 29 out of the 31 cash subsidies Hungary handed out to the sector in the past decade. Recipients included German automakers BMW and Mercedes-Benz, plus battery makers like Chinese BYD and Korean rival Samsung. Based on government data, Hungary has seen over $15 billion in foreign direct investment into its battery sector alone in the past six years. 
though, Hungary's open-door welcome to Asian companies run against certain concerns. Brussels and Berlin have warned about Europe becoming too dependent on China. When asked about the situation, an EU official said the bloc has a system in place to manage investment information from non-EU countries. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for more than a year. Coming up in our second half, evidence coming to light that forced organ harvesting is happening in China. How has the world responded? China is so far away, why should we care? You know, why should we care? And a few years later, you are hit by a pandemic that is spread from China. The full episode is available on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow.